What's going on guys, this is Mike, the Detroit Borg, and today we finally get a look at the brand new iPhone 10. This is the 10th anniversary of the iPhone, and I think it's safe to say that this is the most significant iPhone to come out in its 10 year history. It's a major redesign that also changes the way you use the phone. We're gonna take a close look at that. So there's a lot of firsts on this iPhone. It's the first with an OLED display, the first without a home button, it's the first iPhone with a mostly edgeless display, and it's the first iPhone with facial recognition, replacing touch. ID. So before we get into the details, let's get to the unboxing. And first up, we have Space Gray. They make it really easy to open these up. We have a plastic tab that allows us to take off the plastic shroud. Now, once we lift up the lid, the first thing again we see is the paperwork. So the phone is actually hidden behind that. So the paperwork is pretty basic, but it's specific to the iPhone 10 because the iPhone 10 has such a unique interface. So you want to take a quick look at those instruction booklet or just continue watching the video to find out how to use some of the new features. So moving on to the phone itself, it sort of reminds me of the jet black iPhone 7. In fact, it has the same glossy finish throughout. From the glass to the frame, everything has got a really nice smooth mirrored finish. But of course, in this case, it's not aluminum, it's stainless steel and glass. So the back of this phone is glass, which enables wireless charging, just like the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus. In terms of the accessories, again, we have the five watt power adapter, but this phone is capable of fast charging if you buy the right power adapter. Apple does sell a 29 watt USB-C power adapter, so this will charge the battery up to 50% in only 30 minutes. We also get a set of wired ear pods along with an adapter if you wanna use your own set of headphones. So again, we do not get the wireless AirPods included with the iPhone 10. you have to buy those separately. Also included in the box is a standard lightning to USB cable. Moving on to the silver iPhone 10, the unboxing experience is identical. The only difference is the color. So as soon as I pop open the lid, of course you get some paperwork, but the phone itself facing forward looks identical to the space gray phone. And that's because we have a black bezel instead of a matching white bezel like we got with previous iPhones. But the back of the phone is white or kind of silvery. It actually has a very pearlescent look. So it's a bit more reflective than the silver white on the iPhone 8. And of course we have that polished stainless steel frame, which is quite a bit more premium than the aluminum on the iPhone 8. The set of process with the iPhone 10 is very simple thanks to iOS 11 and assuming you have another iPhone running iOS 11, you can easily transfer that information to your new phone. So it transfers all of your accounts and Wi-Fi settings. Of course, the big new feature within the set of process for iPhone 10 is Face ID. Now, because we don't have Touch ID, this is the only biometric authentication you can use. So it will coach you through the process of setup and basically you just move your face around in a circle so it can map your face in real time. After that, you'll be prompted to restore or set up as a new device. You can also enter in your Apple Pay information. And if you have an Apple Watch, you can go ahead and set that up here as well. And of course we have hands-free Siri, so this will train it to your voice. Just like the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, we also have a True Tone display. Now the best way for me to demonstrate what a True Tone display does is to turn the lights to a more warmer color. So when you activate True Tone or turn off True Tone, you can really see the difference. But basically it reflects the color tone within the room, so it's easier on the eyes. And generally speaking, I really like the feature on the iPhone 8. Now both Silver and Space Gray have a stainless steel frame, but the big difference here is that Space Gray has a coating on top of that stainless steel, which I think should be a little more durable than the raw stainless steel, which will scratch over time. Now I'm basing that mostly on my experience with the Apple Watches. So the stainless steel Apple Watch scratched really easily while the space black Apple Watch held up pretty well. Now, if you're worried about scratching the stainless steel, a perfect solution is a D-brand skin. They have a new skin for the iPhone 10 that completely wraps around the edges. But if you wanna show off the stainless steel frame and want something a little easier to install, they have one that covers just the back glass. And the good news here is that both styles are shipped in your order so you can decide later what you wanna do. The skin also provides much more grip to the phone, which is otherwise just smooth glass and stainless steel. And it also keeps those fingerprints at bay, especially on that space gray model. And the good thing about the skin is that it keeps out the dust and grit that might grind against the stainless steel if you had a case on it. Dbrand has a huge selection of colors and textures to pick from, and you can choose whether you want the Apple cutout or not, and if you want to protect the camera lens. So make sure you check them out. I'll leave them linked in the description below. So the camera module along the back of this phone is a bit different than we've seen from other iPhones. So it's 
is arranged vertically instead of horizontally, and that's probably because of the true depth camera along the front of the phone, which takes up some space at the top of the phone, so there wasn't as much room to orientate this horizontally. But that really doesn't affect the way the camera works. Now, everything has been combined into this one module. So that includes the quad LED flash, the off-center microphone, and of course, the bezel surrounding the camera does protrude quite a bit, but it is stainless steel, which keeps it nice and consistent with the rest of the design. And unfortunately, with that camera bump, the phone does rock around on a flat surface. Because we lost the home button, the side buttons have been updated with some new functions and some new names. So for example, the power button is now the side button, and it's also bigger, and that's because it picks up some new responsibilities, and we'll get into that. We still have the volume controls along the left side, along with our mute switch. Toward the bottom edge, just like the iPhone 8, the lightning connector does support USB 3.1 for fast charging. We have a microphone on one side, a speaker on the other side, and a magic grill insert that matches the color of the frame. Very nice detail. It also extends to the screws flanking the lightning connector. And just like the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 8, the earpiece and the bottom speaker work together for stereo speakers, and they sound fantastic, and they're louder and deeper than they were before. Of course, Apple spares no attention to detail, so even the buttons and the SIM tray is also polished stainless steel. And if you check the SIM tray, you'll see that there is a water gasket around it. So just like the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 8, this is IP67 water resistant. So really, the big news with the iPhone 10 comes down to the display and the way they've adapted the interface to make use of it. But getting to the display hardware, this is also the first iPhone with an AMOLED display. This is really big news. Now, Apple is calling this a Super Retina HD display. This is 5.8 inches with a resolution of 2436 by 1125, good for 458 PPI. That's the highest pixel density on any Apple device. And because this is an OLED display, we have a contrast ratio of 1 million to 1. And that's because OLED is an emissive display. Each pixel is responsible for emitting the light rather than a backlight like an IPS display. So if the pixel is off, it's completely black. This also improves the energy efficiency of the display. This also supports the wide color gamut of DC IP3 like other Apple devices and just like the iPhones before it. And this is still just as bright, if not brighter, than the LCD displays of the iPhone 8 with a maximum brightness of 600 and 25 nits iPhone 10 is also the first iPhone to get an HDR display, and that's thanks to the AMOLED technology. With an AMOLED display, you get those deep blacks, which are needed for that high dynamic contrast. Although the iPhone 10 did not pick up the ProMotion display of the iPad Pro with the 120 hertz refresh rate, they've increased the touch sensitivity from 60 frames per second to 120 frames per second, which might not be noticeable, but it does improve input latency. There's no question that this is a really good looking display, and with OLED, that notch at the top of the phone mostly disappears in most aspects of the interface. The only time it's noticeable is if you have a white background that fills up the entire screen or the home screen. Otherwise, I think it's pretty smartly integrated into the design of the software. Although OLED has many strengths, there are a few drawbacks. One of them is the blue shift, which is pretty common to OLED panels. So when you tilt the phone off axis, you might see some color distortion. Now, it's not too bad on the iPhone. It can be bad on some phones like the Pixel 2. In terms of size, although we have a larger screen, 5.8 inches versus 4.7 and 5.5 on the 8 and 8 Plus, the footprint of the iPhone 10 is much closer to the iPhone 8. So it's really compact for its screen size. But it's important to keep in mind that the screen on the iPhone 10 is narrower than the one on the iPhone 8 Plus. So in some situations, the iPhone 10 screen can look smaller than the iPhone 8 Plus screen, especially when it comes to watching video. The iPhone 8 Plus has a very conventional 1080p 16 by 9 aspect ratio. But the iPhone 10 is taller and narrower. And of course, we have those rounded corners and the notch at the top. So that means videos usually have to be cropped down to fit the usable area of the screen. Otherwise, if you go full screen, the notch and the rounded corners make itself known. Although the display doesn't wrap around the edges like a Galaxy S8, it essentially looks like it's painted right on the glass. There's no gap between the glass and the panel. And with the rounded corners and curved glass, the effect is especially pronounced. It's a really neat design. The iPhone 10 really isn't the first phone to push the display to the edges like this, but it's really the first one to sort of push it toward the corners. So that means for the most part, the bezel around the entire display is symmetrical. There's no chin or forehead 
forehead, and it creates a really impressive look. That is until you get to the notch. But that notch is also necessary because it's replacing one of the features we had before, which is Touch ID. So Apple is calling this technology True Depth. We still have a seven megapixel front-facing camera with an f2.2 aperture capable of recording video at 1080p. But this is combined with other sensors, such as a 3D mapping sensor, which basically casts a grid on your face using infrared. So unless you have a twin or a really sophisticated 3D model of your face, you won't be able to use Face ID to unlock it. Now those flashes you're seeing from the notch are actually the infrared LEDs. Now you won't see this in normal use. This is only visible because my camera is picking up the infrared light. But this means Face ID can work in any lighting conditions, pitch black or bright daylight. Now with my infrared camera, I can actually see how this works. So first it's scanning for my irises. So it's checking to see if my eyes are looking at the device. Once it determines that, it actually flashes the grid right on my face. So if I slow it down, you can actually see the dots. It actually works pretty well. So Face ID replaces everything that Touch ID was used for. That includes Apple Pay, iTunes and App Store purchases, and even bringing up your password. So instead of bringing up a Touch ID prompt, instead it scans for your face. There's also a couple new settings under Face ID. One of them is require attention for Face ID. So basically this means you need to be looking at the phone with your eyes open in order for it to work. Otherwise it could just scan the side of your face and unlock it pretty quickly. But another feature you can turn on is the attention aware feature, which very similar to another phone keeps track of your eyes. So it knows whether you're looking at the display or not and will prevent it from going to sleep. So again, that's kind of a nice feature. So for me, Face ID has been extremely reliable. It works even better than Touch ID. And the great thing here is that it requires no involvement from me. I just wake up my phone, whether I lift it up or tap the screen and unlocks. I didn't have to touch the fingerprint sensor at all. The only time I miss Touch ID is if the phone is laying flat on a table. In that case, it's not looking at my face so it can't unlock. Perhaps the most talked about feature of the iPhone 10 is an emojis, which again takes advantage of the true depth camera. And you can find an emojis within the messaging app. Now each face animates very specific details of your face from your eyebrows to your lips to your ears to the motion of your face and it's really remarkable how well it keeps track of every single detail now each emoji actually has different expressions so as i raise my eyebrows here on the alien it actually raises up my hairline a bit uh, if we go to the fox same thing here the ears respond if i raise up my eyebrows but you can see it keeps track of my lips so i can parse my lips i can scowl i can smile or I can just shake my head. So if you want to record an animoji, you have a record button right here. So you can just talk like you normally would. It records your voice, records up to 10 seconds, and we'll keep track of every single motion and expression. Pretty cool, huh? So next up, let's walk through this interface, which has changed quite a bit. So we do have raised to wake, so it waked up the lock screen so we could take a look at it and it unlocked for me right away. So you can see it's pretty responsive here. So if you take a look at that lock, it unlocked, saw my face and I'm ready to go. So I can swipe up to get to the home screen. But before I do that, I'm gonna take a look at this lock screen. So we have 3D touch actions on the lock screen. So you can 3D touch to get to the LED flash for our flashlight. You have to 3D touch again to turn that off. And same with the camera app. So you can 3D touch here to activate the camera app. Or you can also just swipe on the screen like we're used to to get to the camera app. Now, if you swipe to the right, we still get our widget panel with all of our widgets, which you can modify. And then we have our date and time up top. We do have 3D touch on this phone. In fact, we have 3D touch dynamic wallpapers here. So if I 3D touch on this wallpaper, you can see it animates for me. Also from the lock screen, if you swipe up, you get to your notifications. And then if you swipe from the bottom, you get to the home screen. That can be a little tricky until you get used to it. So taking a look at this home screen, the first thing you need to know here is that the home button is now a swipe up gesture. So again, pretty basic. Now personally, one of my favorite changes with this interface is the swipe action to switch between previous apps. And it works extremely quickly and reliably. And to me, this is a much more natural and quick gesture compared to what we had before. Now to get to the classic overview, just swipe up and hold until it pops them out. And now we can swipe through them. So we can go ahead and activate one of the apps we want here. Or if you tap and hold, you can edit this and swipe up. So this will close out the app and then we can go ahead and exit this. Now if you swipe up now, this will actually just bounce you back to the home screen. Another big change is the gesture to get to the control center. So what you do is swipe in from the upper right corner where the battery status icon is. Now because this notch takes up so much space, we no longer have a percentage indicator with the battery icon. In order to see the percentage, basically you have to swipe down to get to the control center and then you'll see it in the upper right corner. 
Taking a quick look at the control center, there is a setting here to know about. So if you 3D touch on the brightness slider, we have two options. We have night shift, which is a feature we've had before, but we also have true tone. So this is where you can turn that feature on or off. And for the purposes of this video, I've kept it off. Now, because we don't have a home button, we have some new button combinations to remember. So to get to Siri, what you can do is tap and hold the side button. What's the weather like tomorrow? It's going to be cold and wet tomorrow. Of course, you can also just say, Hey Siri, what's the weather tomorrow in Toronto? In order to power off the phone, what you have to do is tap and hold the side button and one of the volume controls at the same time until you get the power down sequence. You also have the SOS mode or medical ID info. Now for screen capture, just tap the side and the volume up key at the same time and release takes a screen grab and you can edit if you want. Incidentally, you can see that the notch and the rounded corners are not indicated on the screen grab. There's a few other nice touches to the interface. So for example, when the apps expand out, they maintain their rounded corners until they meet the rounded corners of the display. To me, this looks really nice. Although it's not on by default, iPhone 10 does get reachability. In order to get to it, you have to go to settings, we have to go to general, accessibility, and you can turn on reachability. So to invoke reachability, you just swipe down at the bottom edge of the screen. And this brings things within thumb reachable distance. That includes the notification shade or the uh, control center. So if the control center is too far of a reach, that's one way of getting to it. Now, the other thing that might be a little strange to people is that the home swipe gesture moves when you move to landscape orientation. So it doesn't stay in the same place. It moves to wherever the bottom of the screen is. And to get to the control center, you still swipe in from the upper right corner and you can see it resizes and scales for the landscape orientation. Speaking of landscape, the iPhone 10 does not get the landscape apps that the iPhone 8 Plus has. So for example, you won't get a landscape home screen or a landscape formatted email app. The keyboard has also been slightly tweaked to take advantage of the space below it. So we now have the dictation microphone and the keyboard selector in the corners iPhone 10 does come with some exclusive wallpapers, but they don't come preloaded. Now they're available from the wallpaper selector under live wallpapers. So you can choose one of three different styles. They've also updated the dynamic wallpapers for the OLED display. So you get a black background, which looks a little more impressive. In addition to exclusive wallpapers, the iPhone 10 also gets an exclusive default ringtone called reflection. So let's go and take a listen. In terms of specs, the iPhone 10 is basically identical to the iPhone 8 Plus. So we get three gigs of RAM and the new A11 Bionic CPU with a neural engine. So that's really just branding for a much more sophisticated chip that's capable of some impressive processing power. And this combines with a new image signal processor for some really impressive camera performance iPhone 10 also picks up an upgraded dual camera setup, specifically the telephoto camera. So although we have the same 12 megapixel sensor from the iPhone 8 with an f1.8 aperture, we get a new telephoto camera, which is also optically stabilized with an f2.4 aperture instead of an f2.8 aperture. So this increases the light sensitivity of the telephoto camera and with stabilization, it's able to keep that shutter open a bit longer. Also, just like the iPhone 8 and 8 Plus, this camera combines with the A11 Bionic CPU to produce really high frame rate 4K. So this is one of the first smartphone cameras to do 4K at 60 frames per second. We also have 240 frames per second slow motion at 1080p resolution. Now one of the new effects with the latest iPhones, the 8 Plus and the iPhone 10 is portrait lighting. So you can actually apply different lighting effects using that portrait mode. You can also turn off the portrait or lighting effects after you've taken the photograph or change them if you want a different effect. Thanks to the True Depth camera, we also get portrait effects for the front facing camera. So that includes both a portrait mode and portrait lighting. So basically the same effects without the benefit of a dual camera like you need on the back of the phone. Right now it doesn't really look like the effect is working that well because it blurs out my ears and the edges of my head. So it doesn't look very precise. So hopefully they'll fix this later. In terms of camera quality, I really have to repeat what I said about the iPhone 8 Plus. And if you want to check out that video, I'll leave that linked in the description below. But again, we have vibrant colors, which is something that the iPhone 8 and the iPhone 10 really improve upon from the previous iPhones. Previously, they were kind of flat. Of course, all images come out really sharp and clear with great dynamic range. Exposure is just right. And HDR processing is excellent. So it doesn't strip away the color as it used to. 
And just like the iPhone 8 and the 8 Plus, low light performance is fantastic. That image processor really does a lot of work to strip away any noise or distortion from low light images. So we have excellent sensitivity, lets a lot of light into the camera so you see a lot of detail. Sometimes it can be a little overexposed and maybe a little soft. And just like the 8 Plus with a dual camera, we also have augmented reality. So a great demo is the Sky Guide app. I use this on the iPhone 8 Plus as well. So the impressive thing here is that it can keep track of distance and objects close to you. So that means it can overlay items on the right surface area while ignoring the other. So that means I can walk around trees and it overlays the star map only on the sky and nothing else. When it comes to battery capacity, the iPhone 10 is slightly bigger than the iPhone 8 Plus, even though the footprint is quite a bit smaller. In fact, Apple put two batteries in here to maximize space. Overall, we have a little over 2,700 milliamp hours. In terms of battery life, the iPhone 10 is slightly behind the iPhone 8 Plus in some areas, specifically internet usage and video playback, which is about an hour less than the iPhone 8 Plus. So if you want the best battery life, you probably still wanna go for the 8 Plus. So in the end, the iPhone 10 has a laundry list of fantastic features and things it gets just right from the speaker quality to the fantastic OLED display, which is one of the best out there. And the design is just stunning. It's one of those devices you handle and just admire. I really like most of the UI changes. I think it makes using the device a lot easier. Face ID is also a big improvement over Touch ID just for the convenience factor, even if Touch ID may be a little more bulletproof. And we have one of the best camera systems on any smartphone today. Now, as an iPhone 8 Plus user, the only thing that concerns me right now is the slightly weaker battery life, at least according to Apple. But we're gonna to test this over a long period of time to really see how the battery holds up. Alrighty guys, hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at the iPhone 10. If you guys want to pick one up, make sure you skin it with a D-brand skin to keep it protected. I'll leave that linked in the description below. If you guys enjoyed this video, I really appreciate the like and I hope to see you in my next video.